I wanted to come on here and share some stuff with you guys. Bear with me because I keep telling I'm not a preacher. I don't claim to be a prophet. I don't really even claim to be a teacher. But I do know how to read and sometimes I understand what I read. Sometimes I don't. So I'm just an average person that is trying to share scripture and uh, share the gospel and share knowledge as I feel that the Holy Spirit is leading me to. Well, the other day I heard a message from David Wilkerson and it blew my mind. I've said repeatedly that I have learned things. I've read verses in the Bible that I may have read dozens of times before, but yet I can read some of them now and it blows my mind how I didn't see what I see now. I didn't see it before. The Lord will plant seeds and we're not all at that point to receive truth. Some of y'all will know what I'm talking about. Some will say, what in the world is she even talking about? The truth is out there. It always has been. The Lord will give you truth and understanding. The real truth is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. But there's also other truths. Truths about things happening. Truths about um, the scripture and the Bible. Well, this message I've heard over and over. And if you're a Christian, if you go to church now or pretty much even in the past, you've heard about the mentions in Matthew about Jesus talking about the latter days and his disciples asking about the latter days and um, and it being compared to the days of Noah. Um, I will share the link. I actually shared this video because David Wilkerson, who was anointed or appointed, I don't even know the right words to use because people get so offended if you use wrong words, but that he was a preacher of God and the Word of God, I believe. But this particular message said, Good Things That Keep People Out of Heaven by David Wilkerson. I will try to share that link either down below in the description part. Um, and I may try to see if I can um, share it in, pin it in a comment down below. I don't know. I've had some people tell me that they, it's gotten to where YouTube don't share um, the links whenever you put links to share down in the comments. So I don't know. But I'm going to begin with this in Matthew 22. And forgive me, it's not, it's not me that you're wanting to listen to. It's the Word of God here. I'm nothing. I'm nobody except a child of God that's trying to do what I can do, what I'm being told to do. But here this is. <clears throat> uh, one of the disciples was saying this on 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And I'm starting out with this for a purpose. And verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Now, it does say after this, the second one is love, but I'm going to end with there. That is the first and great commandment, is that you love God. And in the Ten Commandments, it says, put no other gods before me, Jehovah, Father, the Creator. Now, I am, before I get to the Matthew 24, for some of us that have heard our whole lives that Noah was a preacher. And I looked in Genesis and it didn't really say that, but then you do some cross-referencing and find out that in 2 Peter 2, 5, let's see, do I want to start out? 
2 Peter 2 and verse 5. Actually, I'm going to go up to verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into change of, chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, in verse 5, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, um, condemn them with an overflow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Well, definitely the ungodly living is certainly, certainly key and important. But this message that blew my mind, I've never heard it in this way from David Wilkerson the other day, and his sermon was, as Jesus was talking here, it's um, verse 37, Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, the sermon that he preached the other day that struck me and it convicted me, I'll be quite honest with you, is that, yes, there was evil, horrible evil evils in the world. There were even sons of God that had come down to intermingle with the sons of women or um, fallen angels that were having sexual relations and Nephilim were created. That's a whole nother thing that we, we can get into at another time. So there was great evil in the world and there was great fornication and adultery and perversions of all manners. But I've always wondered whenever I heard that Noah was a preacher that you mean to tell me if Noah was around 100 years old whenever he started? Well, I don't know exactly how old he was whenever he started building the ark, but the ark took like 100 years. And I know I used to be taught in Sunday school that Noah tried to warn everyone and they scoffed at him and mocked at him, uh, mocked him. I haven't found that so far again in the Bible. It may just, we assume that that's what happened because no one else joined him. But I want to take a different uh, approach at this going by what David Wilkerson said. Out of all the years that Noah was a righteous pastor or preacher, you mean to tell me in that day there was no one that would have gone to his church or his his cathedral, his synagogue, wherever it was. I, I don't know. Church isn't necessarily always a building. But at, after his, he's a preacher, no one became, they wouldn't have gotten saved right then. But I don't know how to word it exactly, what they would have called themselves back then. They wouldn't have been Christians because Christ hadn't come along. But that they weren't holy. Out of all the years, any of the years that uh, Noah was preaching, you mean he reached no one? Or did they think, oh, that's just a senile old man? Were they all evil and corrupt? There are some suggestions that said that they were. Or did they, in fact, stop worshiping God and focused on self? and having fun, and living life, and living their best lives, and filling out a bucket list, and just putting everything and everyone ahead of God. Think about this. Pray about this, because I'm not saying, trust me, I really, really, really am not. But there's something to here, to this. I've always felt there's something missing in between some of these stories. Eight people 
Some people said that there may have been millions of people on earth then. Others say there may have only been a thousand or ten thousand. Well, let's just for make it simple reasons. After hundreds or thousands of years, there was only a thousand people left, which I believe there was way more. Eight rescued or saved out of a thousand. That's less than one percent of all people. You mean to tell me literally everyone except those eight weren't they were all corrupt and evil, or were some of them just living their best lives, not serving God, not worshiping God? And because I can't say it as well as uh, Brother Wilkerson, I, that's why I'm going to share this. But it's something to think about. If the number one thing is um, put no other gods before me, whenever you get to the point that you have no time for God, and I'm talking about us today, you, me, me, I don't have time for God anymore. Um, I claim to be a Christian, but yet I don't have any time for God. I don't read the word. I don't pray. I don't talk to him. I don't give him thanks. Am I going to be what he considers bride worthy at the end of my days? I don't know. I I wish each of y'all just listen. I know we have, we like instant gratification. And most of us don't like to listen to things for an hour or two or three hours. I've, in my older age, I will listen because I want truth so bad. And God knows who wants truth and who does not. What if, what if what David Wilkerson said is true and that it wasn't sin in and of itself, it wasn't total corrupt living that would have drowned a great multitude or at least even 10% of the multitude or 20%. It was a fact that you don't even have time for God anymore. And what is key about understanding this, you understand it, you feel comfortable with it because I don't know about what you see, but the world I'm living in, I even know preachers that may start out, or their wives or their kids, saying, my New Year's revolu uh, resolution is I want to walk more miles. I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Jerusalem. Really? That's your takeaway? You want to, instead of reach more people or to tell more people, I want this year to tell more people about Jesus and what he did than I did last year? Really? Christians, as Christians, that's what our goals are nowadays. We just want to have more, do more, be, I don't even know how to, how to say it because I know I'm already offending people. And that if being offended will get you eventually to the point of, oh my goodness, how did I not know this before? Then I'm willing. I, I'm sorry that I offended you in that, that I did not mean to offend but if that's what it takes for you to do, like, I was a bit offended whenever I read some of this stuff. And then I think, wait a minute. Nothing is supposed to come ahead of God. Am I going to be left behind because I've got no time for God? I think that I'm good in the hood and everything is fine because I said a little prayer uh, years ago. Examine yourselves. The truth is out there, and the reason this is so important, if the number one thing is to not put God first, can you look yourself in the mirror or hit your knees and talk to God and honestly see yourself as putting God first, but all you do is go to church, visit a few minutes, hear a very fast 20-minute sermon, especially in a lot of the Baptist churches. You know, you hear a 20 or 30 minute sermon and then out the door you go and you're not back again until you have dinner on the grounds or yada yada. Just make sure is all I'm saying. Make sure. Go back to the word of God because if it's true that it wasn't so much total and complete um, gross sin that caused the majority of everyone except these eight people to die, then 
I want to have a closer walk with God and not put him second and, and third and fourth. You know, that's that's all I'm saying because we are getting into some rough times and there's people, there's so many verses in the Bible that will talk about even people follow, falling away. I'm hoping to do something on that. I just wish that I was an anointed teacher, but I'm not. I'm just an old woman trying to share some of the things as as I learn about them. And I'm like, oh my word, how did I not know this before? Can you really, can you really be right with God? And your first goal not to be to try to share Jesus with others. In fact, and I'll give myself as an example because I tick off everyone not even meaning to. Years ago, whenever I felt so close to God, you know who I used to talk about Jesus with? The, my other churchgoers. Seriously, I'm not making this up. That's who I would talk with. Aren't we supposed to take it out in the fields? If you are like me, like I was then, and you think you're doing this wonderful, godly thing because you'll meet with Sue from church, and you sit down and you pray at lunch, and then you talk about Jesus... Jesus, we don't need to spread Jesus with other believers. We need to spread Jesus with non-believers. So if we're so caught up in these just marrying and, what did it say? Marrying and drink, eating and drinking and enjoying life, are we ready? Are we going to be the ones that is taken up because even down below here it says then shall two be in the fields one should be taken the other left two women should be grinding at the mill the one should be taken the other left watch therefore for ye know not what hour your lord doth come make sure you're not the one that doth get left in the field because you did not put god first i did not put god first I was pleasuring self, and I'm not even talking evil pleasuring. I'm talking my next trip. I'm talking my next cruise. I'm talking my next new car. I'm talking all this stuff. I'm talking about everything but God. So how do I know or you know that we are not going to be the one left in the field? So... Um, check out his video. I'm so inept at this. I do the best I can. And I just try to do what I think the Lord is telling me to do. And I suggest all of us do. Re-examine yourself. Test yourselves. Study to show thyself approved a workman that need not, not be ashamed. We have to take responsibility for our eternity not because of anything we're doing we need to take care of the responsibility of where we're going as in finding truth and the only truth is jesus christ so you do you but it hit me like a ton of bricks that not everyone may have lost their life on that day because they were evil they may have lost their life on that day because they did not put God first. And slowly, when you don't put God first, you go a little bit further away and a little bit further away and a little bit further away. I'm hoping and praying that somehow some of those people on that day may have had a relationship with God and that he sort of removed them before they could taint themselves beyond the point of redemption. Um... Which God, God will take you sometimes before you finish corrupting yourself. I, I believe that anyway. And so hopefully even if you didn't put God first and you will be left here, maybe that means somehow still you will go to be with God later. But it just don't sound like it, does it? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I am not the author. Jesus is. God is. The Word of God. So, love you guys. And this is long, but 
I'm sorry. Uh, there's a message. I may not have gotten that message right. I may not have landed it. I may not have hit the nail on the head. But if you will go to, and hopefully y'all know about the drop-down menus where it shows the description part, where I put sometimes a scripture that I've read. Uh, that's where I will put a link. Um, at some point, loved ones, you and me have to take back responsibility we can't use well i'm sorry god i wasn't really told that because you know what i feel like will be said that day at judgment as we're trying to use excuses just like adam and eve did i'm sorry god that woman made me eat of it and then the woman said i'm sorry lord the serpent no it's on you babe it's on me babe so you can't say I wasn't told that because I feel like Jesus would say, and please, I, I'm really not trying to put words in God's mouth, but the whole Bible is there to tell us what to do and how to do it and what to be watching for and be prepared for and what to stay away from. So you can't technically use that excuse. Before the judge of all judges, ignorance will be no excuse. So, I love you and don't want to lose you. I don't even know you, but I love you and I care about you and I want you okay. Y'all take care. God bless you. Jesus died for you. He loves us so, so much. And we are being warned. If you and I overlook the warnings, then I hope your soul is good with the Lord. And I also hope you're putting... Jesus first and not your pleasures here on this earth because it all comes down to are you saved are you born again are you washed in the blood of the lamb that came down to earth or are you just a person trying to be a good person you go to church and you leave the church and then you go out and you have fun and if you drink a little bit it's okay God knows my heart well make sure Make sure, loved ones, dear ones, take care. Love you. Bye.